Hey, this is Lou Mangello from WDW Radio, and you're listening to the Five-ish Fangirls Podcast. Let's do this. Tangents and Squeak continue all the way to episode 341 of the Five Ish Fangirls podcast. Walt Disney World is tribute to the philosophy and life of Walter Elias Disney and to the talents, the dedication, and the loyalty of the entire Disney organization that made Walt Disney's dream come true. May Walt Disney World bring joy and inspiration and new knowledge to all who come to this happy place, a magic kingdom where the young at heart of all ages can laugh and play and learn together. Welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Five Mish Fangirls podcast. So glad you could join us. Let's start off like I do a on the virtual table and see who's joined us this week. This is Brittany in Bovenio. This is Chrissy in Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello. 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 I wondered if Brittany would remember that she changed locations. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm not quite There was a moment yet, there. But... <laughs> yeah. uh, you would think it's totally different. I would remember, but. <laughs> oh, my. Oh. Uh-huh. Excuse me. Oh, my okay, goodness. Gracious me. You think I got all the yawns out earlier. First world problems. Okay. Filming a video earlier, which should go up hopefully in the next couple of days um, of the stuff I bought at Gen Con. However, I yawned a good half a dozen Uh-oh. times while filming the video. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> so then I'm going back and editing it and cutting out the bits where I yawn. But because uh-huh. I'm watching myself yawn, getting you have to see it to know to cut it out is making me on it's a vicious cycle yeah yep they are right yawning is contagious and yes you can make yourself yourself. watching yourself yawn yes just talking about yawning makes Mm -hmm. me on i guess that makes me like the most empathetic person on the entire planet (laughs) heck i supposedly you yawn more triggered by you're triggered by other people's yawns the more empathetic you are so, mm-hmm. yeah. yep if i'm triggering yeah. myself though does that make me empathetic or a narcissist yes um, um, yeah. <laughs> or self-absorbed uh, none of the above <laughs> power of suggestion i guess yeah we'll go with that one yeah. mm-hmm. anyway so once i get all the odds cut out Mm-hmm. We will have up on our YouTube channel. Yeah. You can see the stuff I bought at Gen Con. Uh, Yay! So, and that's about it for the news. Now, <laughs> <laughs> actually, we I, I don't was... really have any news, and uh, partially that's because Facebook was broken a good chunk of the day. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, if anything they... happened, nobody could tell anybody about it. Yep. <laughs> And we sure as heck weren't gonna check Twitter. Although it's a yeah. good thing I it's a good thing I, I wandered over there at one point because Holly was yeah. trying to message me. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> so thank you, Rob. Yeah. Southgate yeah. <laughs> for putting together a Southgate Media Group Slack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I actually kind of like Slack. I want to use it mm. instead of Facebook. Because <laughs> that made sure that we were actually in touch with each other so that this mm-hmm. can still happen yeah but we made sure to check to trade other ways to get in touch with each other just in case if other yes. things decide to go kablooey yeah <laughs> so just just take this as a as a cautionary i don't want to say cautionary tale but uh don't put all your eggs in one basket mm-hmm. <laughs> when exactly. it comes to communicating yes and other such things so yeah so uh, so, like I said, not really a whole lot of news, just some housekeeping. Uh, yes. We do have a new episode of Gold Standard um, out in the feeds with West Side Story, which was fun to talk Sweet. about. Um, a special guest, which was mm-hmm. cool. Yes. Um, of course, if you know your Academy Award history, you also know that Lawrence of Arabia is next. 
<laughs> so, so, so those we don't you, like sand. <laughs> so, so those of you who who are uh, who are you know kind of I want to say masochistic, but that's the only word that's coming to my head. Who, who enjoy watching other people suffer? And I say this is something that's who actually, Schadenfreude. That's what yeah. it is. That's yeah. what it is. Oh my gosh. Schadenfreude, yes. Schadenfreude, yes. yes. Where you get pleasure from other people suffering. That's the one. Yes. So if you want to get some Schadenfreude from me, again, <laughs> yeah. Because we already did this once. Mm-hmm. On this and show. I and I liked mm-hmm. I liked Lawrence of Arabia. Mm-hmm. So it's just, you know. Yeah. I I don't know how Zan and Nick feel, so we'll find out. Well, given given kind of the track record, I this is just my guess. And I'm, you know, I'm not gonna put any money down on this or anything, but I kind of have a I have a feeling Zan won't like it. <laughs> but I'm willing to be surprised. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Possibly middle of the road for Nick. Maybe yeah. we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Place your bets. Place your bets. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll bet. I'll bet a bag of M and M's. Yep. <laughs> I like the way you bet. Yep. <laughs> I'd rather have candy. <laughs> it is October. This no. is true. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Speaking of which, mm-hmm. <laughs> new month means book club update. Yes, we had a tie, so that means October's book is the audiobook Flip Flop. November's book will be Wheel of Ice, which I believe is the second Doctor book or third yes. one of the two. Yeah, it's it's the second uh, Doctor. Second Doctor. Okay, cool. It's been a while since I've read that one, but I remember enjoying it. Yep. So yep, that was book just, club. It, it is. Have I read that one? I don't remember. There's a lot of those uh, books. <laughs> read it again, and then you'll be like, "Wait, I remember this part. I remember this part." Mm-hmm. But then there might be something you. And if you haven't read it, then you're still going to be, in, you know, you'll be entertained either way. So yes, yes. <laughs> and it'll be a surprise. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, all right. So there is that. Um, we do have some feedback from Shalane, um, and she says, uh, the second Lego movie is good, um, which is good to know, because I did like the first one. I really like Lego Batman. Uh, <laughs> Lego Batman is Best hilarious. DC movie ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. 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 I, I wasn't a hundred percent. Yeah, I wasn't a hundred percent sold on Lego Movie when I first saw it. But what the first time I saw Lego Batman, I I died laughing. Yeah. It was so mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. I was genuinely surprised at how entertaining the first Lego Movie was. Um, how much of that is Chris Pratt? <laughs> that might be a good chunk of it. Uh, but, yes, but, <laughs> but Lego Most Batman is very good. <laughs> so. mm-hmm. Um, and she says most of Illuminations movies are pretty good, so especially the Despicable Me ones. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, as we were talking about the the Super Mario movie that we're getting Christmas next year, supposedly. Again, write these in pencil. Uh, next year at Christmas, we're also finally supposed to get the sequel to Avatar. At this point, why? <laughs> yeah, it's who it's cares? One of those, yeah, Not it's me. it's one of those movies. It's like. It made a, you know, when it was out in theaters, everybody went and saw it because it was like something you have to see in theaters. But really, it didn't make a huge impact on movies since then. Like no. every once in a while, you'll be like, oh, yeah, Avatar, that was a thing. And yeah, it, it's, made, it's, it made a big impact at the Disney Animal Kingdom Park. I can, well, I, I'll yeah. give it that. <laughs> Pandora yeah, is it's, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, and that and that's why it was such a huge movie because Pandora, the setting was gorgeous, yeah, mm-hmm. and that's something you want to yeah, see. The world and, building. Yeah, yep. but it's not necessarily something that you know. Oh, I'll buy that on on Blu-ray and watch it at home. Yeah, it, it's it's yeah, and you know the story is so pedestrian. Yeah, I mean you've like, seen I'll, it you've seen it a million times. Yeah. Like if mm-hmm. I, I'll just I'll just get a Pandora themed screensaver, you know, and have yeah, that up on my much. computer screen <laughs> but, if I feel yeah. like I need to relive the the atmosphere. Yeah, but it is it is definitely a, a you know the setting it it lends itself well to a theme park. Yeah, um, I mean, yes. 
I mean, when I think of, you know, big, ginormous James Cameron movies, I think of Titanic, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that, that's the one that's like, oh, yeah, that one. Because they actually, they, they practically rebuilt the Titanic and sunk it again. Mm -hmm. For yes. that movie. Yeah. <laughs> so. Anyway. Um, and speaking of DC, Aquaman's supposed to get his sequel next year too. I never watched the first one. I I, I cherry picked the DC stuff. So <laughs> the first you know. one, it, it was alright. I like I liked it. I mean, I've only seen it once, but I had intentions of seeing it, and then I didn't. There was a reason. Oh, I was pregnant. That's why. Yeah, and I didn't <laughs> want to go reason. anywhere. <laughs> I didn't want to go anywhere. <laughs> Well, I think I waited until it was on um, streaming somewhere. I don't remember what it was. Probably, I don't remember now. Probably HBO Max. Probably. More than likely. Or something like that. But that sounds right, actually. So, yeah, it's probably yep. that. Yep. So, um, and then Shalane does mention, I guess, a little piece of fandom news that we overlooked um because you know all we got was a title <laughs> mm -hmm. and a release date too but until we see more you know, at this point it's like uh, are we still doing this uh, but yeah the we finally have a release date for the next fantastic beast movie which is due out april of next year this will be called fantastic beasts secrets of dumbledore i think she already told us all his secrets so why <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Whatever secrets like, does he have? <laughs> yeah. Give this is a, this is big foot or something. Yeah, really. Because <laughs> you know, this is like, dude, or is he like, invented butter beer? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> hey, it's kind of like Wizarding Star World. Wars and the yeah. Star Wars prequels. Like you know, Anakin is gonna become yeah Darth Vader right yeah you're not yeah. surprised at the end when you know he's suddenly wearing all black <laughs> right yeah. yeah got the helmet and gets and emo all of a sudden yeah. Yeah. exactly so that's it's like, why you know the the first like, wait fantastic... we know that Dumbledore and Grindelwald have this big battle and yeah. Dumbledore ends up with the elder <laughs> wand and he'll have it until he dies Spoiler alert! Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, like, I mean, we 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 knew we knew about the, the Dumbledore versus Grindelwald thing all the way back when you read Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and you read that Chocolate Frog card, mm -hmm. and they're on the train. Mm -hmm. They haven't even made it to Hogwarts yet, so we know about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. oh, so it's like okay, well, let's watch Dumbledore and Grindelwald whatever have their battle i guess yeah it's it's kind of weird because it's like you know the the, f the first fantastic beast movie where it was oh here's this you know this this wizard that we've talked about in in the books before we're gonna he's gonna get a story and you know all, all these cool there's there's a chance for like cool effects with with all the magical creatures yeah and you know we have the wizarding society in in the u.s in the 1920s and there's a lot of you know cool things to to you know explore and establish and it's like no nah, just kidding it's actually just the same story that we already that we've already told uh but you know we're just gonna bait and switch bait and switch you there yeah it's like it's yeah. like oh look newt scamander look props to hufflepuff you know mm -hmm. y'all yeah. get y'all get a you know a uh, someone to get excited about from your house yeah <laughs> so it's, but, it's, then it's yeah. like oh no wait really this is a dumbledore story yeah yeah oh. and you know that weird i don't i don't know it was the the prospect of the movie was great and, it, and then the ending, and I didn't even see the second one because it was like, mm. <coughs> yeah. No. Well, I guess we'll wait and see. Yep. What happens? So, yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, I. I don't know. Yeah. Again, this must be this must have been what the Star Wars fans probably felt like with the prequels. 
Like, I already <laughs> know this. I already know this story. <laughs> well, even with the prequels, because I remember. I know we're like getting way off the beaten path here, but like I remember when Phantom Menace came out, and I was like, what, fourteen? Yeah, I, I was, I was, you know, middle school, almost into high school, and I mean, it was, it was cool because it's like, oh, Star Wars, like this is a brand new Star Wars, first one in twenty some odd years, and like it mm-hmm. was an event. Like my dad was yep. like, because my dad had taken us to the, when the special editions were in theaters. Mm-hmm. And that was like we made a big deal out of that and then going to see phantom menace like this is brand new star wars it was huge and you know even back then i was like you know i mean now we look at it phantom menace is kind of yeah it's phantom menace but at the same time we're like oh this is so cool this is so awesome and there's young obi-wan and and yoda <laughs> and and yeah and yeah we knew like anakin and padme they were gonna be, or well Amidala because they didn't because they didn't color they didn't color Padme until the second movie really Mm -hmm. um but yeah like it was and and even even the other two movies like we like we did midnight showings my mom called me out of school the next day so I didn't have to (laughs) nice and and, you know the funny thing is we my my first hour teacher was actually in the same theater I was (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then, then when I came back to school the next time he was like I was here where were you <laughs> so, plead I mean, the fifth yeah so, like, Star Wars the prequels yeah we knew the story but it was they, they, it was an event it was a huge mm-hmm. thing prequels for Harry Potter especially this way is kind of like yeah okay it's it's kind of blah especially since she has done so much um world mm-hmm. building like, in the gaps yeah filling in the gaps yeah. and and retconning and stuff anyway so it's like right. well why are you doing these movies because it- like with star wars and george he kept it so tight-lipped yeah like, yeah i'm gonna come back to those and then when we finally were getting pieces doled out here and there it's like yes i want more but like you were saying <laughs> we've jk rowling did a lot of world building so we're just like okay yeah mm-hmm all right yeah so get- like, like yeah like even when the books were coming out like a website the harry potter lexicon just mm-hmm. was like this huge basically encyclopedia and it was you know mm-hmm. a fan run thing but they like like there's this bit of history and there's this bit of history and you know, leaky you, cauldron was leaky cauldron and they mm-hmm. all put stuff together so it's not like there's anything that really needs to be explored unless it's like something new like like in the first movie first fantastic beast movie it's like oh you know it's newt scamander it's this new guy that we don't know much about he's going uh-huh. you know he's in america and this is what the american wizarding society is like and this is what they deal with and this is all this and so it's like okay that's cool that's new that's something we haven't seen before and no it's it's just it's it's grindelwald and dumbledore and it's mm-hmm. like yeah i don't really care <laughs> Or the Marauders. I would love to see stuff. Oh, about the Marauders. Marauders would be a great, a great yeah. prequel sort of thing. Like, yeah, we kind of know about that, but at the same time, it's like we hear about their antics. I want to see young Sirius and young James and uh-huh. all these things. And yeah, we know that worm the worm tail or that Peter uh-huh. is kind of a a, a a douche, but right. You know, yeah. seeing them as friends and Snape and all that sort of stuff that'd be a that's like that that's the kind of prequel i want like because we're getting one side kind of the obi-wan kenobi certain point of view let's see the movie where we actually find out yeah the real deal (laughs) yeah but i yeah i don't think yeah i don't it's yeah yeah Uh, Yeah. like uh, i don't know and i'm I'm kind of yeah i know it's like well go find some really good fanfic because Mm-hmm. There, there, there are some excellent bits of fanfic out there, mm-hmm. and there's been yes. some awesome fan-made trailers for Marauder yeah. movies that are like, oh, I want that to happen. Yeah, right. So, you know, a lot of the times, quite honestly, the fan, the the, the fan creations are probably better than anything official that are, that's going to mm-hmm. come out. And yeah. it's just, you know, it just is what it is. And I think mm-hmm. we're all kind of getting sick of reboots prequels you know filling in the backstory whatever because it, it's never it never quite lives up to what you imagine it to be mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah 
Yeah, it just, just yep. is what it is. Yep. So, well, either way, thank you, Shalane, for the. Uh, Sorry for that tangent. You know? <laughs> hey, what, what, what's our tagline? <laughs> Yes, I know. Yes. It's still sort of, it's on topic. -ish. It's our specialty. Well, she, she did know. ask if we knew if it was coming, so. That's true. Yeah. And I honestly, I did not know because that one, that one flew way under my radar. And I kind of wonder if like, um, like Warner Brothers is like, okay, we have this contract to do these, but the second movie was such a wet fart that. No, well, that, that we're, and we're I may be too. They didn't want to tick off a certain fan base with what's been going on with a certain actor and well, yeah. his situation. So who knows? And yeah. like the whole fandom and lots of other things that have been going on. Oh, uh -huh. Harry, Harry Potter fandom. Ugh, they've all they've all gone. They've all. They, yeah. I, I'll say this: they need to go. They, they they some of them need to check into Saint Mungo's. Yeah, and that's my that's the nice way of saying it. <laughs> I'm not thrilled with a lot with with many with many sections of Harry Potter fandom right now, mm -hmm. and that's you know, mm -hmm. and that's neat. Then that that is all I'm going to say because we're going to talk about something happy. On this yes, <laughs> yes. I don't want to bring us down. Yep. But if you if you want if you want the five minute rant send us feedback and I'll it's, it's saying that you do and I will oblige. <laughs> no extra charge. <laughs> maybe maybe I'll make that a Patreon. Yeah. I don't know how, I don't know how to make that work. But <laughs> Depending on how it goes, maybe. Yes. <laughs> maybe we will charge. Who knows? <laughs> Put it behind the paywall. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> how how uh it's like how colorful do you want our commentary to get? Yes. Do you want we it? Do you want the, it? We can give you the five minute friendly family right. you friendly want it, commentary. Do you want it with f bombs and other other <laughs> colorful language? <laughs> colorful metaphors to quote a certain Vulcan. Yes. yes. <laughs> just let just let us know. <laughs> Word. We can make it happen. I can rant with with the best of them. Yep. <laughs> The Clark Griswold special. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I feel like if that gets popular, then we might actually make that a like an actual like series on our Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know yeah. what? There are people that make good money ranting about stuff on YouTube. So. Oh you know. my gosh! <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. It is a lucrative business. Sad to Sorry, say. Andre so, Black Nerd Rants. <laughs> oh, on, you got Andre, your thing. <laughs> Andre is tame compared to some of the ones I've seen. Well, yeah, I, I'm. I'm actually. I'm actually kind of appreciative of Andre because he's so. He's so wholesome, and I'm like, oh, bless you, Andre. You look for the best in everything. Yeah. <laughs> you need. You need a cookie and a hug. <laughs> uh. And I baked cookies yesterday. Maybe I'll send him some. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Andre, if you're listening, <laughs> send us send me your mailing address. <laughs> I got some cookies with your name on them. <laughs> I, I found this really awesome chocolate chip cookie recipe last mm. yesterday, and Alex and I made them, and they're awesome. I'm gonna make oh, them again. Yum. Kill on me. <laughs> Please share in chat later. <laughs> I shall indeed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's pretty basic. It's the way that you make the cookies that makes them awesome, hey. though. But yes, I will share. I will happily That's share. That's Oh, bye. Well, <laughs> this conversation has already delved into food. And uh, <laughs> hey, we're making hey, a little crowd. <laughs> hey, there's our segue. <laughs> yeah. Although I, the food doesn't really come into this. Not really a whole lot. Uh, at least as far as the you know there was food available <laughs> i know <laughs> true well i mean lou, lou talks about the food at disney world all the time yes so. yes the, it is the the hungriest place on earth um 
We're going to change the tagline from the <laughs> happiest place on earth to the hungriest. Uh, Come so, hungry, there you go. leave happy. Wait, wrong yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yes, over the weekend, I guess technically it was Friday, but, but whatever. Friday is part of the weekend now, especially, yes, it is. At, especially at Disney World. Uh, so October 1st. <laughs> <laughs> was officially the 50th anniversary of the Walt Disney World Resort. Um, so, kind of a big deal. Mm-hmm. Disney really likes celebrating milestones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that it does. Yep, and uh, uh, we went... Uh, my first time going to Disneyland was for their 50th anniversary, and it was amazing. I can only imagine how how awesome being at the Disney World 50th anniversary Yes, is. yeah, mm-hmm. considering they have the blessing of size and therefore can take all the mm-hmm. magic and just spread it out all over the place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, so, but before we talk about the ongoing celebrations and what's still on the docket to come, because there's always stuff in the war- woodwork, um, let's talk about how we got here. Um, obviously, we've covered some of the Disney Corporation history recently when we were talking about the Eisner era and spoilers. We're going to be talking about Walt later in a couple months so uh because they've got some mo- more milestones coming up <laughs> in mm-hmm. later in the year so we're not going to necessarily hash all of that because everything leading up to walt's passing we're going to cover in a future episode so mm-hmm. um, pin in that topic there for now exactly yes. um so uh but Disneyland opens in 1955. Everybody knows that. I, w- mm-hmm. Last time I was at Disneyland was for their 60th anniversary. So, <laughs> 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 which is in 2015. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, 55 Disneyland opens despite the opening day issues. You know, trying to oh. decide whether there should be water, fresh water. Or you know, running restrooms or <laughs> like, oh my is gosh. there water for people to use to go to the bathroom, or should there be water for people to drink? <laughs> um, to get a boat. Asphalt I mean, not both- completely being set, so ladies' heels are getting caught stuck in the in the yeah, yeah, that's yeah. still hot pavement <laughs> asphalt. Um, oh goodness! <laughs> for the water, both is good if yes. possible. Yeah, really. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you're well, desperate, that, I guess. Yeah. I mean, nothing yeah. like this had been done before. Right. So they, you know, they didn't know what they didn't know. So, but now that they've done it, they're like, okay, great, perfect. A uh, few okay, years just- have passed, and Disneyland is obviously very successful, making lots of money. Um, and Walt was like, great, let's do another one somewhere else because it didn't take very long for the city of Anaheim to spring up around Disneyland, which Walt yeah. didn't like. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, yeah. yeah. It's a little wild yeah. at Disneyland because we, we stayed at a hotel literally across the street like we could see the backside of it was still the Tower of Terror at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, we could literally see the backside of the Tower of Terror from our hotel window. So it was really wild to not be in a Disney hotel and see the parks from that perspective really just to see that parks from that perspective anyway even if you're just walking down the street it's like oh yeah it's disneyland right there and there's a denny's and a cvs 
and a bunch of random hotels and you know people trying to drive that aren't there to go to the parks they're like on their way to work or on their way to the grocery store or wherever so it's like you know downtown anaheim theme park just plopped yeah. in the middle of it. <laughs> so uh, you don't get I, the I mean yeah i i imagine i imagine that uh people who live in anaheim they know what they're in for or they ought to be anyway <laughs> well yeah yeah holy cow yeah the ones the people i know that live there in that area are huge fans anyway so they mm -hmm. they're 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 totally cool with it because it's like oh, yeah, so, it, it, yeah. it gives you know i will handle the traffic if it means i get to go to my happy place so you know but yeah it is if you if you've been to both you understand when you get to florida and you whatever transportation you're on whether it's a taxi or a bus or you in a car or whatever you drive under that sign that just the big walt disney world sign and you've passed essentially the property line mm -hmm. and you're now in the bubble and the rest of Florida and the rest of the outside world is just like, bye bye. <laughs> it <laughs> yeah. does not exist. It does not exist. Uh, so yeah, so Walt was all like, um, let's uh, let's try this again with more space. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, okay. Um, and uh, so they're like, okay, well, what 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 would be a good location? Because you know, Anaheim is Southern California, so the weather there is really nice most of the time, most of the year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't necessarily get things like hurricanes and stuff on the West Coast. Obviously, things like earthquakes potentially can happen, um, but still, you know, um, they knew that it needed to be someplace where there would be easy access traffic wise, preferably decent weather, you know, most of the year. Um, they had done market surveys and found out that only 5% of Disneyland's visitors came from the east of the Mississippi River, which in the late 50s was where 75% of the US population lived. Yeah. So they were missing a big chunk of the market share there, as far as uh, the U.S. population was concerned. Um, so they start searching for places um, all over the U.S. Um, and start narrowing it down. Uh, eventually, they end up in Central Florida in november of 1963 where they they fly over several potential sites um and eventually come across uh the land that's really just swamp land at this point um in near orlando florida um and uh, uh they were you know, walt and his his team you know roy because he was working with his brother roy because roy was the guy holding the purse strings uh because walt would have been like yes let's buy it all build it all and you know roy would be like <laughs> uh counting pennies um <laughs> but walt really like they all liked the idea of central florida because one the weather obviously yep. florida pretty mm -hmm. warm all year round every now and then florida will get a cold snap aka my first anniversary trip where it was so <laughs> cold so so cold <laughs> at least it week. wasn't at least that wasn't for your wedding yes that's true um but and it does rain although usually yeah. in florida it rains like clockwork for like five minutes and then it's done yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's four o'clock in the afternoon yes yeah you like if it starts raining my, but like one of my first days when I was in Florida and it was like raining, it's like, oh no, we got to go inside. And the, and, and my girl, the girl that I was with was like, no, 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 we'll just, we'll just wait it out. And then we'll, we'll, we'll go back. And I was like, but wait, what? And then it's like, oh yeah, five minutes later, literally yep. gone. <laughs> yep. Yep. Every now and then you will get torrential rain. 
which I have been stuck in. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> ask me sometime. I'll tell you about riding Splash Mountain in a downpour. Oh my uh, gosh. Fun. <laughs> yes. Uh, That's so. like... I don't know, like 3D Splash Mountain? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> 40 uh, <laughs> Splash Mountain. Um, uh, there was also uh, Interstate 4, which runs right through it, uh, the Florida Turnpike, and there was also a nearby airport, which at the time was called McCoy Air Force Base. That is now the Orlando International Airport, or MCO for all of us Disney fanatics. We all know the airport code for Orlando and International. Uh, <laughs> so, that's someone who's been in the airport for non Disney reasons. <laughs> yep. Uh, so, so yeah, Central Florida checked pretty much all the boxes that Walt was looking for. Uh, plenty of space, undeveloped, it's a bunch of swamp land. Um, so, you know, it's not like they're going to be destroying forests of fully mature trees or things like that. There wasn't really any wildlife. Um, although if you watch the <laughs> if you watch the uh, the uh, program from the uh, the dedication that they filmed uh, the year that it had opened, the the TV special, uh, Bob Bob Hope, because of course it's 1971. So who else are you gonna have in it? in a TV special, mm -hmm. Bob Hope. And he jokes about, you know, how hard it is to relocate 8,000 alligators. <laughs> oh. Yeah. They weren't really that. I don't know if there were 8,000 alligators, but there's still alligators there, so. There are so many alligators in yeah. Florida. Yeah. There's a yeah, reason they that it's the Florida gators. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Anyway, and anyone who tries to tell you there are not gators on Disney property, they're lying. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah, so Walt was like, great, perfect, done deal. But, you know, they were, they were doing like helicopter tours. So, you know, they were like a helicopter flying over various areas and they came across this one and they were like, checks all the boxes, great, great, great. Then they were like, you know, when we get back, we'll start talking paperwork, get this ball rolling. Um, it just so happened um, that they got back to like a hotel or wherever that they were working out of while they were there in Florida. Um, and any, any and all work that they were gonna do to start getting the ball rolling hit a firm stop because it was November 22nd, 1963. Uh, yeah. yeah. You remember American history? Yep. <laughs> well, even if you just know your Doctor Who history. Yeah. What happened the day before Doctor Who debuted? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the death of a U.S. A death sitting U.S. president, especially by assassination, um, kind of puts the kibosh on any plans you may have had for anything for the next few days. Uh, so, but. Once, once they got, once they felt, you know, a decent amount of time had passed, um, then they got the ball rolling, um, and they realized very quickly that the Disney name uh, had a lot of power and prestige behind it, and if Disney started, just rolled into Central Florida and started buying up a bunch of land, that the people that own that land would be like, oh, Disney has money. <laughs> Let me charge them way more than what this land is probably worth because they can afford it. Uh, so to avoid that, they set up a handful of dummy corporations <laughs> to yep. do the purchasing. <laughs> Um, and, uh, so, um, that included the I-4 Corporation, A-Y-E-F-O-U-R, as the I-4 Interstate, <laughs> the Latin American Development and Management Corporation, and the Reedy <laughs> Creek Ranch Corporation, 
which the Reedy Creek name would actually is still exists. Um, mm -hmm. We will get to that. So uh, yeah, so they had real estate agents working on behalf of those organizations that had no idea that those companies were Disney. So these real estate agents were just like completely clueless to who they were actually working for. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they were able to um, buy two large tracts of land for about one and a half million dollars. Um, and then um, several smaller tracts of land um, were purchased. Um, so they had to do it just in chunks and pieces all over the place. Um, and, so, and some play and some bits of land they were able to acquire for like a hundred dollars an acre, which is nothing. Really, even in 1950s money and early <laughs> yeah. 1960s money. Um, so um, one of the biggest issues that they actually came across, and this is something I did not know, was part of the land that they bought, the mineral rights to that land was owned by Tufts University. Oy. Oy. So even if Disney owned it, Tufts could essentially come in and be like, well, no, there's been important minerals that have been discovered in this land and we have the rights to it so we can just dig up anything that you've done so that we can get to those minerals. So they ended up having to negotiate a deal with Tufts to buy the mineral rights uh, for that. I'm sure um, that cost a pretty penny. Oh, uh, no, only $15,000. That's oh. not bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like, oh, wow. So, like, you know, you're, you're going about your day in, you know, whichever whichever uh, park is, is there. And, and then they're like, oh, hi, by the way, we found, you know, there's this mineral here. We need to go dig it up. Um, we're going to dig it up under the corn dog stand. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to remove this. <laughs> yeah, this uh, carousel here, you're going to need to move that. Yeah, like so that's weird. gonna happen yeah. <laughs> this castle here it's kind of mm -hmm. in the way yeah <laughs> mickey Minnie, you gotta you, you gotta scoot okay yes. right there yeah <laughs> yeah nope out of the way thank you please and yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so um they they bought as much as they could before they legally had to file the deeds because the deeds would are things like that are public record and you can't mm -hmm. put like the dummy corporation on there uh, right. <laughs> no. uh so um, are we are we have phlebotanum here yes phlebotanum. anyone's yes <laughs> yeah exactly um so but even before that there was already speculation uh just because suddenly there's huge chunks of land being bought um and word All gets around between businesses. Area. <laughs> yeah. So word gets around. Um, but most people, while Disney's name did come into the conversation, a lot of people thought maybe NASA, because Kennedy Space Center is nearby. And of course, you know, we mm -hmm. just landing on the moon mm -hmm. um, and things like that uh, <laughs> were going to happen <laughs> fairly soon. <laughs> um, Ford, the Rockefellers, Howard Hughes, um, you know, all, all sorts of names like that were were getting thrown out there. And uh, Walt was like, yeah, let's feed like the Rockefeller rumor. You know, let's feed <laughs> some of these others and get, you know, light a fire under them so that, you know, we kind of end up on the background. Um, but um, but um, a editor from the Orlando Sentinel in October of 65 was visiting Disneyland for the park's 10th anniversary celebration. And she just flat out asked Walt if he was, if they were behind the recent land purchases. And apparently Walt does not have a poker face. <laughs> that that kind of surprises me but mm -hmm. just, you think he would just like yeah. with everything he's, he's done up until that point 
but you know maybe there i guess there's a reason that uh, roy was co- sort of the the logistics guy and walt yeah. was the creative <laughs> yeah 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 so uh that was pretty much that pretty much told her everything she needed to know so she ran with the story um and uh at this point walt realizes that there's not a whole lot they can do about denying it so yeah they ended up um doing a uh they were going to publicly reveal it that november so she just waited a month uh <laughs> but uh so it was like okay well fine so they went ahead and and had the press with the governor of the state at the time and um so uh well the governor confirmed it and then they had a press conference like they had originally planned <laughs> so um so yeah uh but unfortunately the next year walt dies um so at this point what they're calling the florida project was underway they had end up acquiring a little over 30,000 acres of land um which is about 48 square miles which is about twice the size of the island of manhattan um so it's a lot mm-hmm. <laughs> the disney property in florida is a lot um and you know walt's thrilled one because they've got all this land and two not only um you know will they get to do you know essentially east coast disneyland bigger and better because they have more space but because he really really wanted to get epcot off the ground which was the thing that was getting him really excited um and if you've seen um any of the video of walt talking about the florida project um he you know he he, they've got you know early designs and layouts for epcot he's talking about how amazing it's going to be we will talk about epcot in full detail yes it also had its anniversary on october 1st but we will give epcot its due next year when it turns 40 which is really scary because that means I turned 40 not long after that. <laughs> Epcot Cause is because Epcot and that. I are like four and a half months apart. <laughs> so okay, Rachel, 40's not bad. I know, but still it's like, hey, Epcot's turning 40 next year. It's like, oh. Oh, uh, you know, just just you know, the history of Epcot and what it is and, and all that stuff. It is Woo, it is yeah, quite the it, trip. <laughs> that may end up being like a multiple part. <laughs> that may need to be broken up into yeah. multiple parts just because future world and like world showcase could each be their own mm-hmm. thing. Uh so um but yeah, so they were just like Walt was just on cloud nine about this whole thing. And of course Disneyland is still, you know, doing great and you know, the, the studio is still hopping and, you know, bopping, you know, they had the Mary Poppins recently and, you know, everything's just great. But unfortunately, Walt does pass away uh, in 1966 um, from cancer, lung cancer. Um, and his brother, Roy, Roy O, obviously, because when we talk about the Eisner, it's Roy E. So this is Roy O. Um, was going to retire but when walt died he ended up postponing his retirement to oversee the florida project um and one of the things that they really realized early on and would really benefit them from not oh you know ha- not only having all of this land but also being in charge of it so they ended up having to go to the you know the florida government and um creating their own jurisdiction essentially governing jurisdiction which is the reedy creek improvement district so i told you reedy creek would come back um so disney was able to the company was able to uh incorporate this governing body 
uh, with, you know, borders, you know, this plot of land, this border on this map, all of this area right here, this belongs to Disney and is now part of the Ready Creek Improvement District. Mm -hmm. And that would give them essentially almost complete autonomy within the borders of their land. So things like land use regulation and planning, building codes, surface water control, drainage, waste treatment, utilities, roads, bridges, fire protection. There is a fire department <laughs> on property, depending on where you're headed. Sometimes you will drive by it on a bus or in an Uber. <clears throat> you can't miss it. Brick, Brick Red Firehouse, where it says Reedy Creek Fire, fire Department. Um, it, they've got emergency medical services, environmental services. So pretty much a lot of that stuff is done uh, you know, by the RCID. The only things that they have to uh, bow to county and state is property taxes and elevator inspections. Huh. I mean, property taxes, yes, but the elevator, that that one, I never thought about that. Yeah. But so um, so if yeah. if you ever if you ever want to build your own city, find a swamp that nobody wants mm -hmm. and make sure you're incorporated on your own. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and that's the thing is a uh some people don't realize is because Walt Disney World Resort, you know, this Reading mm -hmm. Creek Improvement District is owned and governed by Disney. That makes Disney, once you're on property, technically you are on private property, huh. which is why they are able to have the rules and regulations for guests and enforce them however they see fit. So even if I don't know about the state of Florida, mm -hmm. uh, in general, what like their gun laws are, like as far as like open carry or concealed carry permits, those do not exist if they do exist. Once you're on Disney property, like firearms are not allowed. Mm -hmm. It would be like if somebody came to your house and you know you were like, this is my property, I don't want firearms here. Right. Even if the, the person legally had the right to carry that gun as the property owner, you have the right to say no. Um, so things that, yeah, you know, things like that. Um, that's a that's a big one that I can think of where people don't realize that once you're set foot on property, technically you are on private property. Even though they're a public company, the property is theirs. You're, it's like visiting someone's house. Um, so they set the rules and if you don't like them, too bad. You can leave. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you know, most of the time it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Every now and then you will see, you know, stories. I mean, it's Florida anyway, so you're like Florida person, you know. <laughs> Florida man, <laughs> Florida man, for a reason. Yes, indeed. Uh, and uh, every uh, yeah. now and then you will get an article, but. 99% of the time it's it's not a big deal and yeah. you know Disney can just most of the stuff that they're in charge of doesn't matter to guess anyway um you know things like utilities like water treatment and things like that you know the guests aren't going to care as long as there's clean water for them to drink out the, you know out yeah. of the as water long, fountains as long as the bathrooms are clean and yeah exactly um and actually, like their building codes, even though you know they can use their own their own building codes, uh, they don't have to adhere to outside building codes. But actually, their building codes in general are more strict and actually better than most standard building codes. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's well. I mean, when when it's a you know private companies and you know, especially mm -hmm. like with Disney and the reputation that they have that they're trying that the image that are that they that they try to maintain it's like yeah they're they're gonna have some pretty um high standards mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so make sure yeah. it's built to last yes yes exactly and, and they're celebrating their 50th anniversary so uh what do you think yeah <laughs> yeah yeah uh, so the entire 
plot of land is the uh, R, you know, RDIC, but then there are also two actual cities within the borders, the city of Bay Lake. And at the time it was the city of Reedy Creek, but that's been since been named the city of Lake Buena Vista. So technically when you go to Walt Disney World, you're not going to Orlando. You're going to, depending on what part of the property, Bay Lake or Lake Buena Vista. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> but anyway, so they did the, um, once they got all the, the red tape taken care of, uh, obviously, construction, big, big, big uh, deal um, as far as uh, construction is concerned. Uh, one of the videos I watched on YouTube, at one point, it was considered the largest private construction project like in the country. Um, yeah, it's like this would be the equivalent of somebody building like a house. <laughs> so, <laughs> a very, very big house. Very, very big, big house. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, with they, uh, because of things that they had, the, the, the things they didn't know when they built Disneyland that they know now, they were able to work on those things. So, things like, um, because the cast members, which are what Disney employees are called, um, depending on which land or attraction or restaurant they're working in, they all have different costumes. And one thing that upset Walt early on at Disneyland was seeing a cast member walking, you know, like either to or from their assigned location in a costume that didn't match the area they were walking through um, because they didn't necessarily have backstage area for them to walk. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what they did is the the magic Epcot's got some too, and some at Downtown Disney they have some, but most of um, most of the uh, hidden <laughs> walkways are underneath the Magic Kingdom. So technically, the Magic Kingdom, when you're standing on Main Street looking in the castle, technically you are on the second floor. You are above ground. You are above <laughs> ground. Um, because the first floor is because of the water table, you can't actually really dig that deep. Yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you cannot have a basement in Florida. No, mm -hmm. no. So there are a series of tunnels called utilidors that run underneath the Magic Kingdom Park that, uh, that are like nine square miles or something like that worth of, I've been down there, down in the utilidors, um, on a, uh, tour. Uh, that we did the year we got married. Um, that was one of the things we did. Um, so that was kind of cool. They take you down there. Not allowed to take any pictures or anything, but they do take you down there to see a little bit of it. It's very cool. Um, everything's color coordinated, so you know where you are. Um, and there's signage everywhere, but then there's also color coordination. So you're like, oh, I need, you know, if I need to, I, I don't remember if this is accurate or not, but like, like, I need to get to Tomorrowland and I'm seeing yellow, which is Adventureland. I need purple, you know, <laughs> wrong color. <laughs> uh, wrong so, color, crunk. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, and they got people in golf carts, like electric carts down there because there's a, it'd be a lot of walking. Um, so yeah um so yeah there's the the utility door is underneath that allows people to get from one area to another without being seen by the guests that's also how they're able to get rid of a lot of trash um and um you know that's where they house like costuming and all sorts of things you know break rooms pretty much everything that a cast member needs is actually underneath your feet when you were in the magic kingdom um, and actually when you're in the Magic Kingdom, you're actually at an elevation of 108 feet. So, um, so that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so October 1st was opening day, I mentioned. Um, and at the time, the Walt Dis okay, so there's the Walt Disney World Resort. So that includes everything. That is all of the theme parks, 
all of the hotels, the transportation, Disney Springs, ESPN Wild World Sports, uh, you know, downtown Disney, or it's not downtown Disney anymore, but Disney Springs, yeah, all the stuff that guests can do while in the Disney bubble, that is the Walt Disney World Resort. So opening day, the Walt Disney Resort consisted of two hotels, um, the Contemporary and the Polynesian. Um, the Fort Wilderness would open later in October. Uh, so it's not like, oh my God, there were only two hotels. There were three by the end of the month. Um, there was also two golf courses, which had actually already been open for several weeks, uh, the Palm and the Magnolia, and then the Magic Kingdom theme park, um, which also opened on October 1st. Uh, so October 1st, 1971 is all, you know, the anniversary of that particular theme park, but actually the resort as a whole, um, which is why we're seeing the celebration not just contained to the one theme park, but we'll talk about that. Um, so, but on opening day, there were, for the Magic Kingdom, there were 23 attractions. Um, 20 of them were duplicates from Disneyland, and then there were three unique to that particular park. Um, so, and the, the three unique ones were the Country Bear Jamboree, the Hall of Presidents, and the Mickey Mouse Review. Um, which Mickey Mouse Review no longer exists. Um, and of the other attractions that were also opening day attractions, um, which anything pretty much is considered an attraction, even things like fireworks. Mm -hmm. um, so even things like that are being included. So um, there was a specific like daytime fireworks show that doesn't exist anymore, but um, things like the afternoon parade, the three o'clock parade. What time is a three o'clock parade? Um, <laughs> the nighttime parade, the nighttime fireworks. Um, you know, those have changed throughout the years, you know, the themes and, and stuff, but they, there's still something that exists. Um, and, but uh, Mickey Mouse Review no longer exists. Um, the Tomorrowland Speedway no longer exists because that's where the Tron coaster is going. Um, and Snow White Scary Adventures no longer exists um, because that is where the Princess Town, Princess Royal Hall place where you meet and greet the princesses now exists because um, that was part of the Fantasyland expansion. So, but most of the opening day attractions actually still exist. It's, some have changed, <laughs> uh, like Dumbo uh, has moved <laughs> and there's actually now two Dumbos, uh, <laughs> you know, spinny thingies. Mm -hmm. um, the Frontierland Shooting Arcade, the Haunted Mansion, which really has not changed any, uh, <laughs> at least. The, don't, don't fix what ain't broke. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a small world, <laughs> which I'm sure some people would probably like for it to change, but it hasn't. Uh, the Jungle Cruise, which has seen some changes, but it's still cheesy. Uh, I love it. The Mad Tea Party, which I enjoy. Unfortunately, Chauncey does not fit that well. Those legs of his <laughs> are not conducive to the teacups. Uh, sorry for you tall folks. No. I don't think they thought that, you know, like they, the they didn't, they six didn't consider would be, you know, super long legs would want they, to, they the didn't tops. consider that those of us in adult sizes were going to be writing the, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. teacups. <laughs> yeah. Um, the main street vehicles. So things like the horse strong trolley, the fire truck. Uh, things like that. Peter Pan's flight, the carousel, <laughs> Swiss Family Reach, uh, Robinson Treehouse, uh, the railroad, the Tiki Room, which did change for a while there, and then they changed it back. <laughs> um, and then, like I said, the the we still have afternoon parade, evening parade, nighttime fireworks, things like that. Um, so, uh, for those of you that may be asking. What about Pirates of the Caribbean? That's a classic 
Disney attraction? Well, folks, they didn't <laughs> think that they needed a Pirates of the Caribbean attraction <laughs> in Florida because they were already in Florida. <laughs> like, yes. why would they want to see pirates when they're already... <laughs> Uh, a, a, a little a little tip if you ever go to florida and find yourself in a town called saint augustine which is a place i spent a lot of time when i was in florida there i mean that saint augustine is like the you know the oldest city in in the in the country sort of thing and they pride themselves on that and there's all of this there's either this you know the spanish conquistador there's the fort and stuff and there's pirates that, mm -hmm. those are the big <laughs> Oh, and, and Flagler College. But yeah, you know, when you're in Florida, you know, outside of, you know, Disney and the parks and stuff, pirate, pirate theme stuff is everywhere. And I love it. Yes. <laughs> I want to go back to, to St. Augustine and take my family and say, look at all this cool, awesome stuff. Yeah. Yeah. When we were in, oh, where did we go? We were in uh, Topsail Island. In the Carolinas years ago on a family vacation with Chauncey's family and they had a maritime pirate museum and I thought it was just the coolest thing ever um so <laughs> yeah no pirates are cool no matter where you're located yes. but yeah unfortunately my beloved Pirates of the Caribbean did not open until 1973. Yeah I, I kind of I feel like that was a bit of an oversight on uh, on the planners because it's like i mean yeah you're in florida and there's pirate stuff everywhere so what do you want to do it you know uh, on on the on the flip side you know many decades later they decided to recreate you know california at disneyland in california mm -hmm. <laughs> so you have <laughs> california adventure that's like okay that's that's silly but at the, but then it's like okay if, if they can do that you, you florida you know disney world can have pirates of the caribbean <laughs> Yep. Mm -hmm. It's okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so it did the uh, I found this um, uh, uh, scan that somebody did of a article from the Times News in Hendersonville, North Carolina from Monday, September 27th, 1971. And the article is titled, Disney World Florida Opens Next Friday. And um, I, I just love this. It, it's a, seconds after 10 a.m. next Friday, the first paying customer will push through the turnstile at Walt Disney World. They misspelled Disney wrong. It said Disney. Can't believe it. Let it go. <clears throat> a 40 million monument to the man who believed the fantasies of children could also be fun for adults. Florida probably will never be the same again. <laughs> Understatement of the century. Take, mm -hmm. take note, probably. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at least in the pattern of its tourist trade, but no one is sure what to expect <laughs> yeah when when uh when i got um uh, so so i went to florida you know serving a mission for my church and you know they don't they you know you you don't pick where you go they they assign you where you go so when i got my letter telling me where i was going and my you know my my area was going to be you know the jacksonville area my, uh, my sister shalane said does that mean you're going to disney world and i was like no that's orlando <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was her first thought when, when I said Florida. <laughs> I mean, why else do you go to Florida? Well, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yep. uh -oh. Beaches, probably, but yeah, yep. no, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, yeah, they had the, the it's op it opened October 1st. It wasn't until the 25th of October that they actually had the dedication ceremony. Um, with all the pomp and circumstance that when it actually ended up going over the course of like three days, which is where the the special that I was talking about, Bob Hope, uh, comes from, which you can go watch the entire thing on uh, actually the WW Radio YouTube channel. Uh, but I will also have it linked in the show notes. But it's this whole like hour, almost two hour thing with Bob Hope and Julie Andrews, which 
<laughs> it's like oh it's Mary Poppins um <laughs> it's Mary Poppins y'all uh Jonathan <laughs> Winters Buddy Hackett and Herbie the love bug um <laughs> uh so it it is just just early 70s just oh you know it's it's wild to see it especially because like you have like julie andrews with like these other people like singing and dancing in the middle of main street and you can see the crowds of people like on the sidewalk but everyone's just so still and quiet like if you watch like specials now <laughs> It's not like that with the crowd. <laughs> no, no. I was like, very much. these people have like no life in them whatsoever. And I'm like, you're at the opening of Disney World. Not, you know, it's like, there's Julie you're Andrews a, right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not at a funeral. For clap or sing, you know, at least, at least, you know, I wanted to see at least, you know, a few people maybe clapping their hands or bobbing their heads. But it's like, they're just standing there staring. <laughs> mm -hmm. People, people just i guess they didn't have tv presence back then who knows yes so but it's still it's still fun to watch um so you can like i said i'll have that linked in the in the show notes um but yeah roy did the uh, dedication which is the the quote i used at the beginning of the the show um and then you know as you know roy was uh uh you know, obviously happy to, um, you know, complete his, at least part of his brother's dream. Um, Epcot would still take another 11 years to uh, be completed. Um, but uh, at least they got this far, which is good because Roy would end up dying that December. Oh, geez. I don't, I didn't, I don't know that I knew that. Yeah, yeah, he died yeah. on December twentieth, nineteen seventy-one. Whew. Yep. So good, they got done what they did. Yes. Um, yep. And obviously, you know, other people would have to take over from there. But like I said, we'll talk probably, about that when we give Epcot probably, its due. Yeah, it probably wouldn't have been as good. Maybe. Um, Maybe I don't know. Nope. So. Uh, but, uh, you know, despite everything um, they did, I think it did pretty good within its first year of, op of uh, opening, they saw almost 11 million visitors. So that's pretty good. Um, and um, even with the <laughs> convoluted ticketing system. Uh, they were they still made a lot of money is mm -hmm. uh, it 10 you know almost 11 million people even when you even when you're like oh ticket prices admission prices were three dollars and fifty cents for uh -huh. adults <laughs> you're like oh that's so cheap until you realize that you needed a and i did not realize this i it, i feel like a, I don't take away my disney fan card um, I knew about the coupon book with the, the lettered tickets, you know, A through E, although actually it was A mm -hmm. through D at first. And then as they got more thrilling attractions, they added the E ticket. Um, so I knew that the like admission into the park was really cheap because you had to buy the ticket books to actually ride the attraction. Yeah. But I didn't realize that you actually needed a ticket just to use the transportation to get to the park oh wow. wow because they didn't have buses like they do now that could that there's a, a bus parking area that's on that's close so, to the gate so on the wait, other the bus, side of the lake the bus um, was considered like a ride no they didn't have the bus that's the thing they or didn't not the have bus that, buses or whatever the, to get what it, from to was get it the, like the yeah, monorail you, or something yeah the monorail and the uh the ferry boats um or the the uh tram i guess if you parked in the parking lot um to get from one side of bay lake the big lake you know 
that you see, <laughs> you know, in front of the Magic Kingdom. It's like, oh, castle, there's the train, there's the monorail, big lake. Um, on the opposite side of the lake is the TTC, the Tr Ticket and Transportation Center, which is where you would buy your tickets. Now you can buy like donuts and coffee and stuff there. Um, but that's where you can either get on the monorail or the ferry to cross Bay Lake to get actually to the entrance of the Magic Kingdom. I did not realize that you had to have a ticket to ride those on top of having the ticket to get into the park. Oh my gosh. Wow. That is almost the definition of being nickel and dimed. A little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, it was like, mm -hmm. yeah, we're at Disney World. You know, it's like, hey, we need tickets to get into the park. It's like, and the, you know, like you with your kids are all excited. Mm -hmm. You're you know, like, you can see across the lake, you know, the castle and you can maybe hear some noises or something, you know. Yeah, uh, you're, you're ready to go. And and you're like, woo. Like you're like, do you want to take the boat or the monorail? And there's like one kid's like, monorail. And the other one's like, ferry boat. It's like, okay, well, we'll figure that out once we get our tickets. And then they're like, yeah, you need tickets to get across the damn lake <laughs> first. <laughs> and you're like, excuse me? How yeah. much did I mm -hmm. pay to get here again? <laughs> well, the Boy, thing is, there was, a, there, was a, there, was, there was a combo ticket. <laughs> they got you both. It was like 375 uh so um that let you use the transportation and gave you a coupon to actually get into the into the theme park and not all of the attractions once you got in the park were necessarily ticketed either some of the shows and stuff didn't require tickets um but then yeah you had the the, the actual attraction tickets uh, which the A through E, A being your tamest rides, to E being your most thrilling state of the art rides, like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and yeah, Space Mountain once it opened in 1975, um, and things like that. Um, and um, which you could buy the books or you could just buy the tickets. For a particular ride individually which i read somewhere they went from like a dime to like 90 cents and they, and those stayed the same price until they eliminated that completely so wow yeah you know, that's kind of surprising that disney had something they didn't raise the price of the entire time mm -hmm. it existed is now now it seems like they're raising the price every time every time bob Iger or bob chapek sneezes yeah <laughs> Mm. they're like Achoo. oh i have allergies that's gonna cost you another five bucks yeah <laughs> uh yeah um uh so yeah so they they did the the whole ticket ticket thing until um epcot opened um and then they're like yeah this would be too convoluted with two theme parks so uh, let's just do you know, just buy entrance to the theme park and then you can just ride whatever the hell you want as many times as you want, as long as you're willing to stand in line. Um, so that's what they did and that's what they've been doing ever since. So, uh, so 50 years later, here we are. Ta-da! Big celebration. Uh, going on at the moment they're calling it a ear iridescent <laughs> celebration okay. oh never Someone got paid big money to come up with that yeah what and is someone's this? what is it someone what is, is it huh what uh, cuz i know like um like the 60 when i went to disneyland for the 60th the 60 is diamond yeah 50 is gold yeah 50 is gold mm -hmm. yeah so but apparently gold is not cool enough so we needed to go like 
iridescent. <laughs> sure, I guess. I Which, I mean, know. if you've seen some of the merchandise that they've come out with, some of it is pretty dang cool, especially, you know, because I know there's some people out there that really love, like, iridescent, like, holographic mm-hmm. type stuff, you know, who mm-hmm. you are, holla out to my... Well, I'm not one of them, but to all the ho- hollow sexuals out there. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, just, I don't know what kids are into these days. Uh, <laughs> but anyway. So, so I, I, you know, I, I'm around kids a lot, you know, just, you know, my own and the ones at the library, and I still don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an old lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, but because, uh, like I said, it is the Walt Disney World Resort, they're not keeping the celebrations just to the Magic Kingdom. Um, they are celebrating across all four parks, among other things. Um, so starting October 1st, um, although I think they started selling merch and stuff before that. I gotta get those dollars in. Oh. Um, but, um. The Cinderella Castle at the Magic Kingdom Park has gotten a makeover, which looks beautiful um, from what I can tell in people's pictures and video, which anything other than the birthday cake they did for the 25th is, an, I think, an improvement. Uh, <laughs> I remember that birthday cake because... Oh my God, the birthday it- cake. Uh, yeah, I Disney never World. saw the birthday cake in person. I've only ever seen it in pictures. Uh, but it I, was I, they like it was Disney a thing that channel. Happened. Yeah, Disney Channel. Um, they, it was like wall to wall, twenty fifth anniversary of Walt Disney World, and they had that birthday cake on all the ads and all the the promos and the spots and everything. I'm like, huh, that's a thing. Yes. <laughs> yep. Uh, so. This time, no birthday cake. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, but that look it that looks really beautiful. Um, there is a new uh, firework and nighttime firework and projection show called Disney Enchantment, um, which you can go see videos of all of these new shows um, on YouTube. You know, pick your favorite Florida-based disney channel um i don't think lou has really got on there yet i'd have to look um but i know like places like attractions magazine have videos and stuff up so um if you're partial to one channel over another go check it out um and then um at epcot uh they have harmonious which is the new night team show uh, which is really cool because it's it celebrates the music and how music is kind of like a universal language um, that we can all understand regardless of what language we may speak, um, but it incorporates uh, a lot of um, songs from various Disney films that are land specific. So like you're getting music, got like music from like Coco representing Mexico, um, you know, Beauty and the Beast representing France. Oh, oh, so uh, like, 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 that. like different countries. Yeah, yeah, because like they have when you different thought, countries. Okay, because because when you said land specific, I was like, so like, you know, like the dirt or the ground? No, or no, the, okay. different, the different the different countries represented in, in Epcot. Ah, uh, okay. Showcase. Ah, uh, um, gotcha. So, but it, it's kind of cool because they have like, uh, you know, they've done obviously new or- orchestrations of these very recognizable songs like reflection from mulan and uh part of the song will be sung in like cantonese gotcha uh so that's really cool to hear some of these songs sung in the the native language uh, of, the, of the country that they represent so um that's really cool um there's now the new remy's ratatouille adventure in the france pavilion which is a new attraction um that's uh a transplant from disneyland paris um Hmm. which is supposed to be really cool um and then uh spaceship earth on the outside has gotten it's supposed to be getting a 
an upgrade on the inside, but I don't think that's done yet. But the upgrades outside Space Shape Earth, which is the giant geodesic sphere, it's not a globe, it's a geodesic sphere. Um, mm-hmm. The big ball. It's a big um, golf ball. Yeah, the big golf ball um, has gotten a makeover on the outside too. And now they can do, they've done like projections and stuff on it before, mm-hmm. but now they can do projections, but it also has its own lighting. Mm-hmm. So nice. it's really, really cool. <laughs> uh, they can do some, uh, it's pretty cool. It's really, really pretty. Um, uh, and then over at Disney's Hollywood Studios, they are doing special uh, projections on the Hollywood Tower Hotel, which is the Tower of Terror attraction, um, which is not like a show or anything. It's just a projection that they're doing. But the projection, uh, you have to watch the, I, I have to find the one specific video that I watched where they were able to get some they, they had a good enough camera they were able to zoom in from where they were and get some of the shot because it's so cool because they the, the projection they've done on the hotel makes it look more like maybe the hotel would have looked in the era that it's set in in like the 1920s so like that art deco era and like where the windows and stuff they've put like there's like people it makes it look like it's an actual living hotel where people actually staying and doing things like people, you know, having conversations in their hotel rooms and people in the ballroom dancing and people in the restaurant eat is very cool. Uh, <laughs> um, and then uh, they are doing uh, uh, projections and uh stuff on the tree of life at animal kingdom park um and then there's also a new after like daytime show called disney's kite tales um which i have not watched video of yet um and then throughout all of the parks and i think maybe some of the resorts too but definitely in the parks um they've done a series of they're calling it the disney fab 50 character collection so there are these specially designed and made bronze statues of various disney characters all over the disney park so it's kind of a fun you know seek and find <laughs> type thing you can do um so that's cool so that's some of the stuff that's going on now some of this stuff is not going to stick around long term. It's specifically for the anniversary celebration. <clears throat> um, it'll be interesting to see what they do at like Christmas time, how they make it work. Because at the Magic Kingdom and the studios, they have special projections specifically for Christmas. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what they do, especially the stuff at the at the studios with the the Tower Hotel. Um, if maybe, maybe prep and just... land, maybe prep and landing will take a, a take a year a Christmas season season off, I guess. Um, or maybe they'll Christmas Christmas by the that what's could there. be it too. They could they they could do that too. Um, obviously, things like the the new Ratatouille ride that's going to stick around. <laughs> <laughs> that's not going to go away in 18 months. Um, so, um, and then there's still tough stuff coming. That it, Now, this is not unusual for Disney. Even on the 50th anniversary website, you know, it says, you know, a ir- this iridescent 18th month celebration. It is well known in the Disney fan community that a Disney year is 18 months. <laughs> Anytime Disney celebrates something, it is for 18 months <laughs> at least <laughs> um so yeah there were a few things that were supposed to be open and available now for guests to experience as of this past friday obviously the last year and some change the last 18 months uh kind of put a <laughs> stop on construction (laughs) among other things when you're when your parks are closed for like four months 
you know, <laughs> it's not like they were working behind the scenes while the parks were closed. Like nobody, yeah. you know, you can't, it's kind of hard to do construction when you're supposed to be social distancing. Uh, mm-hmm. So stuff got delayed. That being said, because this is an 18th month celebration, some of this stuff technically can still open while the celebration is going on. Um, that includes the uh, Tron light cycle uh, roller coaster that is now due to open next year, um, which is, again, a transplant from one of the foreign parks, in this case, Shanghai Disneyland. Um, like I said, the Tomorrowland Speedway is now gone. Um, because that's where the Tron light cycle attraction is going. Um, but I've seen video of the one in Shanghai. It's really cool. It is really, really cool. Um, and then um, also now due to open next year, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, which will be opening in Epcot, that is uh, replacing Ellen's Universe of Energy. Um, it is going to be one of the world's longest enclosed roller coasters. Nice. Which is cool in itself, but the fact that we're finally, finally having a permanent Marvel MCU themed attraction in Florida. You do not know how happy that makes me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, we can guess. <laughs> oh, yes. oh, so happy. <laughs> I saw one of your tweets earlier today. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh yes. My goodness. I still need to get to Disneyland though to see all the Marvel stuff. Mm-hmm. Our, good, our, our good friend Kevin from True North Nerds is there right now or was there in the last so few jealous. days. So jealous. <laughs> uh <laughs> sneak him along in his luggage. <laughs> yes, really. Um the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel and essentially really resort uh, mm-hmm. but ho- themed res- uh, hotel is now scheduled to open March 1st of next year um, which is going to be located just south of this of the studios um, and the hotel is going to have a entrance inside of Galaxy's Edge Ooh. in between Smuggler's Run and Rise of the Resistance, which is uh, having it like smack dab in between two attractions is wild. I haven't been to Galaxy's Edge yet, so I don't, you know, I've only seen video and stuff, so I can only picture it. Um, at Disneyland, there is actually a California Adventure, one of the ho- Disneyland hotels actually has a dedicated entrance that feeds right into the park. So that in itself is not that unusual. Um, when you when you think about it, but this is supposed to be like the most immersive like experience if you're a Star Wars fan. Like mm-hmm. if you're staying here, you're not going for the Disney bubble. You are going for the Star Wars bubble. Mm-hmm. So, uh, that's cool. Um, and then. The most, uh, the thing that's going to be opening soonest um, is the new Cirque du Soleil show at uh, Disney Springs, which is right now scheduled to open November 18th of this year. So Cirque du Soleil, the run to life, which I never got to see the other Cirque du Soleil show when it was there. So, (laughs) Uh, but, uh, that's cool. Uh, so, yeah, good stuff coming. Good stuff is happening, has happened, is happening, will be happening in Central Florida. You know, if you're a Disney fan, so mm-hmm. um, yep. and you know they're still working on other. Um, uh, accommodations um, as well. They're right now supposed to be next year, but we'll see what happens. A new DVC resort 
that is uh, supposed to be built between the Wilderness Lodge and the Fort Wilderness Resort and Campground called Reflections, a Disney Lakeside Lodge. Um, so we'll see how on schedule they stay with that. Um, and then the, um, the Swan and Dolphin, I believe their rooms just got updated. Um, and then there's now the Walt Disney World Swan Reserve, um, which is a new Marriott um, owned hotel over by, presumably by the Swan and Dolphin, which is near Epcot, which I've stayed at the, can't remember if I stayed at the Swan or the Dolphin. I can't remember now. I stayed at one, <laughs> one of those, um, for which, I mean, it, it there, it's on Disney property, but they're not Disney owned and operated hotels. Uh, still really nice. Probably one of the best beds I've ever slept in actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, and being that location it was so nice to be able to walk to either epcot or the studios and not have to wait like five million years for a bus or a boat or a monorail walking with being within walking distance of a theme park is just love it and the beds are really nice too <laughs> but it's not they're not disney hotels so <laughs> Yeah, but they are very nice. So, you know, maybe like you're a Marriott Rewards member and you've got points <laughs> to use, go for it. Yep. But anyway, plus there's all the other 50th anniversary stuff. Like I said, there's merch, there's specialty food there. I told you, I, we, get it, we get it to food eventually. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's all the specialty themed food that's also iridescent. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, good stuff, good stuff happening. And after watching, uh, you know, a lot of this, both the retro stuff and the new stuff and seeing pictures and living vicariously through friends that have, were either there for the celebration on Friday or just local and are there anyways. Um, it's making me homesick. <laughs> <laughs> Time to plan a trip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you haven't already started. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got a cruise planned for 2023. So but it is making me homesick, but I still really want to go to Disneyland too. These are first world Disney problems. I <laughs> totally, don't, don't get me wrong. You know, people are like, hey, you know, I never be able to afford to go to Disney. I totally get it. It's, you know, it's an expensive vacation. It's not necessarily in the realm of doability for mm -hmm. everybody. Um, it is a privilege. Uh, I totally get that, you know, so me whining about it. Oh, I want to go to Disney. And I, you know, I was like, oh, do I go to Disney you know, World? Do I do a cruise? Do I go to Disneyland? It's first world problems. I totally get it. <laughs> it here, here, here's, here's my outlook on it. I've only been <clears throat> to Disneyland twice. I have never been to Disney World. Mm -hmm. um, if I wanted to go and if I wanted to spend the money, I could totally save up for it and go. Mm -hmm. um there are there are a lot of other things that i have to slash want to do that are a little closer to home mm -hmm. and where my kids are so little still i mean i don't think what you know there's there's this sort of like someday i want to do mm -hmm. x with them mm -hmm. so I, I think it's just you know a matter of what do you want to do what are your priorities and what do you have to do do with your you know what are you what where are you in your life so it's not a matter of oh you know you you you're whining and complaining because you have to because you can't decide if you're going to disneyland or disney world yeah um it's just kind of a you know this is you know that's where you are in your life and mm -hmm. you know you know someday i do want to take 
my take my family take my kids to to disneyland and i mean for me growing up i mean i knew i knew people who went every year and like they go once a year and that is like their big thing and and i you know we wanted to go and my mom always wanted to take us and she finally just said like when i um, when i was in college she just finally said we're going to Disneyland and I don't care what, you know, cause my dad was always like, I don't want to go. I don't know. He's, <laughs> yeah. he's funny about taking family vacations. Mm-hmm. Um, but my mom just was like, Nope, we're doing it. And if your dad wants to come, he can come too, but we're all going. <laughs> and he came and he actually did have a good time. Cause he, he's not really big into like, a, like amusement parks and stuff like that. Um, so he just thought Disneyland was just another, you know, silly amusement park where, you know, the kids all ride the rides and he has to sit, Side, uh, on the sidelines but he actually had a good time he's like oh we mm-hmm. should come more often and i'm sitting there going like dad i've been asking to go since i was six years old and here i am i was 20 at the time 14 <laughs> years too late <laughs> yeah <laughs> Quite but, partly. You know, partly but it was sort of like it was just kind of an interesting moment and we're all we're all like yeah dad we told you so mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know for some it's people, one of those things where you really have to experience it to get it yeah uh-huh. yeah and 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 my dad he 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 really enjoyed it um but yeah it's it's something you know it's just like what it where is your where where is your what, what where's your life at what's your priority and you know there are people i know that you know they go all the time and that's great so i mean i'm not going to be like oh rachel you're just a selfish so-and-so for <laughs> saying oh i haven't been to disney world and and i can't decide because that's you know that's your thing that's what you that's what you do mm-hmm. and yeah. and honestly and for me like i i'm like i don't go all the time i would love to go more but i've got other things i've got to deal with but i do things like i listen to lou i you know look up things on mm-hmm online you know you you talk about what you're doing and you know we have the videos and things like that and for for me for me I'm like that's cool I'm good with that and mm-hmm. one day I'll go and but until then I will live vicariously through the people who go all the time yes <laughs> so there's my that's my outlook on it yeah take it for what it's worth yeah <laughs> No, nope, that's uh absolutely. It's all it's all just about priorities. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah. And right yeah. now, my priority is figuring out how to have someone send me a, some of those fiftieth <laughs> anniversary snacks in the mail without them completely getting destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good luck with that one. <laughs> yeah, can't help you there. Anyway, so. Uh, if any of our listeners can send Rachel some snacks from <laughs> Walt Disney World for the, 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 the special fun ones, uh, or, you know, just want to talk about Disney World or, you know, the anniversary or anything like that, um, send us some feedback. Our email address is fiveishfangirls at gmail.com. You can also go to our website, which is the fiveishfangirls.com. You can find all of our social media posts, uh, you know, links to our social media as long as our social media is working, Zuckerberg, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. get your get your routers straight or whatever the heck was going on today. Wrong uh, lever, routers. crunk. <laughs> routers, servers, whatever. Yeah, whatever it is. Um, but yeah, go to our website. You can get our social media. You can you know help support the, the channel or the, the channel, the podcast. We actually do have a YouTube channel too. Um, and yeah, we we love hearing from you guys. We love to. See, hear your thoughts and and ideas and your outlooks on whatever it is we're discussing and again thanks for listening thanks for supporting us and we'll we'll still be here even if uh instagram is down or mm-hmm. whatever <laughs> yep. yes, all right so with that now i'm getting hungry uh <laughs> let's get let's get rachel out of here so she can go with that dinner. let's yeah. sign off for this week so i can go eat mm-hmm. <laughs> this is Brittany and Be- yeah, belvedere saying good night this Brittany is somewhere <laughs> yeah she's somewhere in the eastern time zone we'll, we'll say mm-hmm. that <laughs> this is chrissy saying good night from salt lake city this is holly from wisconsin saying good evening uh, this is Rachel in Indianapolis, India. It, you know, if any of the Disney execs 
random people happen to be listening to this, I'm just saying, you know, a five-ish fangirls group trip to a Disney park, mm-hmm. either Disneyland mm-hmm. or Walt Disney World would make a really great way for all of us to meet at the same time. I'm just saying, uh-huh. this is yep. true. Just That's say true. it. And, you know, mm-hmm. as long as Instagram is working, we could post the hell out of it. All the food pictures. All the food pictures. Guaranteed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yes. We got our five ish angles guarantee on that. Mm-hmm. Yes. We will we'll we'll put in a good word. Mm-hmm. Totally. <laughs> to the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. You can find more episodes and information at the fiveishfangirls.com. Any and all books, movies, games, and any other forms of media mentioned are owned and operated by the respective copyright holders. No copyright infringement is intended or implied. If you wish to support the show, the easiest way is to leave us a rating and review. More ratings and reviews will make it easier for others to find the show. If you wish to support us monetarily, you can do so at patreon.com slash fiveishfangirlspodcast. All money goes towards fees and equipment to keep the show going. For official Fiveish Fangirls merchandise, visit redbubble.com slash people slash fiveishfangirls. We love hearing from our listeners and encourage feedback. You can email us at fiveishfangirls at gmail.com. You can also like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fiveishfangirls. Thank you so much for listening and may the squee be with you.